There is great danger and poison inside of each of us. How do we battle that? I'll be talking about that coming up. Hey, that's a lot of birthdays. This is Quick Study. Stay there as we continue. We are discovering the Bible from beginning to end in 2014. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. My name is Rod Hembry. And I'm Janice. And it's time to discover the Bible. This is Bible Discovery on Quick Study Television. Thank you for joining us today. As we go through the Bible in one year, it's 2014. Yes, it is. We're in the book of Genesis. Here's what we're studying. Our reading assignment in the Bible guide is, in fact, Genesis 8 to 11. But we're focusing on Genesis 11, verses 1 through 9. We're going to be talking about the poison in our mind and our soul and how to stay away from it. Corey is here with Bible Archaeology. Corey? Today we are going to be exploring the character of God as revealed in the early chapters of Genesis. And we're also going to be taking a look at the Bible's claimed beginnings to the nation of Egypt. And Ryan is here with Cosmic Mysteries. Ryan? A bit of a history lesson today. In today's report, we're talking about the island universe theory, which was proposed by the 18th century philosopher Immanuel Kant. Very interesting. So Janice, later on we're going to talk. What are you doing? We're doing Do You Know segments again for the year 2014. And here's your question for today. Do you know who is marked as being the third oldest human being in biblical history? Okay, so this guy's the third oldest third human. Oldest. Only the third, mm -hmm. not the first oldest. Nope. That and more coming up. Stay there. If we are going to have ideas of God and we're studying the Bible to find those ideas of God, it's important that we really pay attention to the character of God as revealed in the scriptures. Now, very early on in Genesis, there is a specific characteristic that is amplified. Within the content of the first two books of the Bible, revealing information on the character of God is given. The personality of God established in the beginning is important. It should act as the reader's foundational point of understanding. Whatever he or she learns about God from the rest of recorded history should be anchored by the first descriptions of God's personality. In the creation account, God is shown as creative truth that is, that exists and cannot be resisted successfully. Many attributes of God are built upon this foundation of living truth. But there is one that is the star of Genesis and Exodus, God as a rescuer. More than once, God is seen to initiate salvage operations for mankind. In Genesis chapters 6 through 9, we learn of the flood of Noah. This history is often used to give God a bad reputation as a judgmental tyrant. But the careful reader will notice instead a different emphasis. Mankind is recorded as morally ruined, enacting terribly strange corruption regularly, except for one family, that of Noah, whom God rescues from the corruption of humanity and from the judgment of that corruption, the flood. Genesis chapters 18 and 19 record another famous saving act that again is often used to blacklist God, the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. In this history, we have God setting up Abraham to negotiate for the survival of the cities. When Abraham's mercy has run out, God still sends angels to one of the cities. When they still cannot meet Abraham's criteria for survival, the family of Lot is still saved. 
A third famous rescue of the righteous is seen in the event of the Exodus. God hears and sees the enslavement of the descendants of Abraham, and through a long, miraculous process, he saves and purifies them. One of the early established characteristics of God is his desire to save. It's time to explore the superheroes of the Bible. Now, personal and communal pride can be very dangerous and cause serious delusions. It's spiritual poison, actually. After God's judgment changed the whole world through the flood, the rebellious people of the world made a decision based upon pride. They chose to come together and build a superstructure to heaven. They visualized that they could make a name for themselves in a way that nothing could ever be impossible for them to do. Likely, they reasoned that they could keep themselves safe from any divine future discipline. But their heroic efforts failed. They thought themselves to be superheroes, but they ended up being super confused. Genesis 11, 1 through 9. Now the whole earth had one language and one speech. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar and they dwelt there. Then they said to one another, Come, let us make bricks and bake them thoroughly. They had brick for stone and they had asphalt for mortar. And they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower whose top is in the heavens. Let us make a name for ourselves, lest we be scattered abroad over the face of the whole earth. But the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the sons of men had built. And the Lord said, Indeed, the people are one, and they all have one language, and this is what they begin to do. Now nothing that they propose to do will be withheld from them. Come, let us go down and there confuse their language, that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from there over the face of all the earth, and they ceased building the city. Therefore its name is called Babel, because there the Lord confused the language of all the earth, and from there, the Lord scattered them abroad over the face of all the earth. Genesis chapter 11, verses 1 through 9. Thank you for staying with us. This is Bible Discovery on Quick Study TV and Radio. Great to have you along. My name is Rod Hembry, and as we study the Word of God together, we learn some important things today. We're coming to you, and let's take a look at the overview. Our point is strong poison. What am I talking about? Poison for the soul, mind, and the body. We'll get to it in a moment. Now, our assigned reading in the Bible guide is Genesis chapter 8 through chapter 11, Tower of Babel. In the Bible guide, we will study our focus on Genesis chapter 11, verses 1 through 9. Let's begin the study here on the television program. As we continue on the radio program, we look at Genesis chapter 11, verses 1 to 4. After the flood, this is after the flood of Noah, here's what happened. Now, the whole earth had one language and one speech. And it came to pass, as they journeyed from the east, that they found a plain in the land of Shinar. It's modern-day Babel, by the way, modern-day Iraq. Uh, that's where, uh, actually, ancient Babylon is today. And there they dwelt. And then they said to one another, Come, let us make bricks, and let us bake them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone, and they had asphalt for mortar, so the technology of building was advancing. And verse 4 it says, And they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city, forget about God, and a tower who goes top in its heavens. And then let us make a name for ourselves. 
lest we be scattered abroad over the face of the earth and the whole earth indeed. Now, Jewish tradition in the book of Jasher gives some interesting traditional insight. It is here where we discover that the possible motivation for building the tower was to escape any future judgment from God. In other words, if God flooded the earth again, the tower would be so high they could escape it. But beloved, that's not what God said to do. God said, be fruitful and multiply and get out there and fill the whole earth. Besides, God had promised not to flood the earth again. Well, that brings us then to our first point for strength for living. Our mind becomes poisoned when we begin to exalt our reasoning above God's word. Our mind becomes poisoned when we begin to exalt our reasoning above God's word. And that's when we get into a lot of trouble. And these people began to reason themselves and get rid of God's word, and they didn't trust him anymore. And that's what Satan does to cultures and societies, to individuals and even to families. Now then, we look at Genesis chapter 11, verses 5 and 6 as the story continues. This gets interesting. But the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the sons of men had built. And the Lord said, Indeed, the people are of one. And all they have is one language, and this is what they begin to do. Now nothing that they propose to do will be withheld from them. Notice here that God explains to us in this narrative, the Holy Spirit is teaching to us the power of agreement. And so, beloved, when we agree together on something, and if, if a society, through its laws and through its social reasoning, agrees to oust God, oust his word, and oust his, uh, uh, his value system, then we are going to become poisoned. That brings me to our second point. Our faith becomes poisoned when we join in the power of agreement against God's plan. You see, beloved, we do have faith, and many people have faith in the things of men rather than the things of God. But that is a foolish faith. And so we are encouraged in this story. The Holy Spirit is teaching us and showing us what's going to happen. So what do you think happens? Well, in verse 7 of Genesis chapter 11, here is what the Bible says. So God says, come, let us go down and confuse their language that they may not understand one another's speech. And so the Lord scattered them abroad from all there, all over the face of the earth, and they ceased building the city. Beloved, here's the point. Our soul becomes poisoned when we dedicate our resources to things that go against God's plans for us and those around us. Notice here that God said to Noah, be fruitful and multiply. I want you to scatter over the face of the earth and multiply. But the culture of Nimrod, that rebellious mighty warrior, said, let's bring the people together. Let's not be fruitful and go all over the earth. Let's come together and build a name for ourselves. God's will was still done. It was decreed, get all over the earth, fill it. And God confused the languages at that point uh, because the men and women of the earth would not do his will. You see, beloved, there, there are two kinds of wills. There's God's decreed will and there's God's moral will. God is not willing that any perish, but some will choose to renounce God and they will perish. God doesn't desire that. That's their own choice. But the Bible also says that every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. And they will, one way or another. Some in rebellion and others, of course, willingly. And so we see here this amazing situation with Nimrod and his culture creating what we now know today as Old Babylon. And the ruins of that tower are in fact visible even to this day. Now, word of instruction before we head off into the weekend reading, and that is this. We are going through the Bible historically and chronologically with our own unique quick study Bible plan. And so the reading over the weekend, we're going to enter into the book of Job, which also occurred around the time of Abraham. And for the rest of the te today's teaching and for that new schedule, make sure you write to us for our quick study power guide, I call it, 12,000 words of original commentary. The address is on the screen. You can get it at the website as well. All we ask is that you would be kind enough to consider an offering in any amount. We would greatly appreciate it. Beloved, God is speaking to us. Are you listening? 
Every single day, the Lord is talking. We should learn to listen to His Word. Genesis has long claimed uh, to know and record the roots of many of the major empires of the ancient world, and that was criticized for a long time until archaeological research unearthed many things. Take a look. Among ancient cultures, there is perhaps none more captivatingly mysterious than ancient Egypt. Its bizarre treasures and eerie hieroglyphs are no easier to translate than its history. But how did this puzzling empire begin? Our ancient sources and the Bible agree. It was founded by a king known as Mitzrayim, Mens, Min, or Narmer, who is said to have unified North and South Egypt. In the Bible, we are told that Mitzrayim is the son of Ham, the son of Noah. After the Tower of Babel, when humanity was forced to separate from one another, Mitzrayim, his seven sons and their families settled around the Nile and founded Egypt, or Mitzrayim. Today, Egypt is still locally known as Mitzr, a remnant of Mitzrayim's biblical name. Greek historian Herodotus tells us that Mitzrayim, or Mens, is credited with building the city of Memphis to rule all of Egypt from. But first, he had to reroute the water of the Nile with various dams. The value of its central location outweighed the hassle of its construction. The Nile was diverted and Memphis was built, along with a lake and a temple to the Creator God, who was taught to have spoken the world into being. Mitzrayim is said to have ruled for 64 years before being killed on a hippopotamus hunt. There is another clue to the biblical identification of Mitzrayim. These first dynasty kings built their tombs out of mud bricks, similar to those that would have built the Tower of Babel. Alongside their tombs, they built boat houses that encased fully assembled boats around 75 feet long. Housed at least six miles away from the Nile, historians are at a loss to their significance. But if Mitzrayim was only three generations from the flood of Noah, the life-preserving significance of the boats becomes obvious. The Bible describes several creatures that sound more like phenomenal myths and legends that have been passed down through the ages, rather than reliable truth. Three books specifically deal with strange creatures, Job, Ezekiel, and Revelation. Let's first look at Job. God is describing two large beasts to Job. First, behemoth, whose tail is like a cedar tree, and whose bones like bars of bronze, and who is not disturbed even when the river rages. You've been listening to a special clip from our new DVD offer, Weird Creatures from the Bible. This video can be yours with an offering of $25 or more. We need your help. Quick Study Television is supported by viewers just like you. And when you give $25 or more this month, we'll send you this video, a special investigation on the weird creatures of the Bible with Rod Janice and Corey Hembry. Our address is P.O. Box 150, Murraysville, Pennsylvania, 15668-0150. Or in Canada, P.O. Box 456, Orangeville, Ontario, L9W5G2. Call for faster service, 724-733-8336 or 519-940-8338. You can give online and download directly there at BibleDiscoveryTV.com. You're watching Bible Discovery TV on Quick Study. Ryan is here with Cosmic Mysteries, right? In today's report, we're going to be studying Immanuel Kant's island universe concept. Now, this 18th century philosopher's idea conflicted with the ideas of the early 20th century astronomers. But who was correct? Let's study.
What is cosmology? It is made up of two words, cosmos meaning world and logos meaning word. Modern generalizations of these words has rendered logos to mean study of and cosmos to mean the universe as a whole. So cosmology is the study of the universe. By definition, a cosmology is a particular theory or statement about how the universe or some part of the universe operates. The heliocentric theory, that is the idea of a sun-centered solar system, is a cosmology. The geocentric theory, the idea of an earth-centered solar system, is also a cosmology. The island universe theory, a concept proposed by the 18th century philosopher Immanuel Kant, is also a cosmology. In the beginning of the 20th century, most astronomers believed that our galaxy, called the Milky Way, was the only galaxy in the universe. As a result, the words galaxy and universe were used synonymously, and the Milky Way was referred to as the universe. Looking through a telescope reveals thousands of patches of light, which were thought by most in that age to be clouds of gas within the Milky Way. Because these faint patches appeared to be cloudy, they were called nebulae, which is derived from the Greek word for cloud. Yet Immanuel Kant's island universe concept proposed that many of these faint patches were actually other galaxies that each contained billions of stars. Due to the fact that these galaxies were separated by massive distances of space, they were compared to islands. Larger telescopes revealed that some of these nebulae were actually stars, now called star clusters. Yet astronomers noticed that many of these nebulae had flat, circular, or elliptical shapes. This suggested to some that these might be distant universes or galaxies like the Milky Way, as Kant had proposed. However, most astronomers still held to the idea that these were clouds of gas within the Milky Way. This was due to the fact that this gas cloud idea fit very well with the nebular hypothesis. Popularized by the French atheist Laplace, the nebular hypothesis imagined our solar system forming from a flat, rotating disk of gas and dust. Interestingly, modern evolutionary models are descendants of this original theory. However, Immanuel Kant's island universe theory was confirmed to be true in 1924 by the famous astronomer Edwin Hubble. According to Dr. Danny Faulkner, Hubble did this with very long photographic exposures of the Andromeda Galaxy, designated M31, made with the Mount Wilson 100-inch telescope, then the largest telescope in the world. The photographs revealed faint individual stars in M31 that were identified as normally very bright giant stars. This could only be true if M31 were extremely far away, at the time, Hubble estimated its distance as nearly a million light years away, which placed M31 well outside the Milky Way. Because M31 appeared to be the largest and brightest of the spiral or elliptical nebulae, it followed that the others probably were even more distant galaxies, a conclusion that was soon confirmed. Do you know what the majority of the founding fathers of science had in common? Most of them were Bible-believing Christ followers. This is no coincidence. In the book of Jeremiah, chapter 33, verse 3, the Lord says, Call to me, and I will answer you, and show you great and mighty things which you do not know. Christian writer Henry Benjamin Whipple said it this way, All we want in Christ, we shall find in Christ. If we want little, we shall find little. If we want much, we shall find much. But if in utter helplessness we cast our all on Christ, he will be to us the whole treasury of God. Something to consider. Very interesting. Thank you, Ryan. Uh, excellent job. And of course, I've been pushing Ryan to come on every day. One of these days, we're going to get him on days. every day. One of these days. <laughs> not putting a, any pressure on you or anything, Ryan. No, not at all. Anyway, uh, very good. So what are we talking about? What do you mean birthday? The third oldest? What is that about? Well, here's what I want us to talk about today. It's a do you know question. Do you know who is marked or recorded as the third oldest human being in biblical history? Okay, third the th oldest. third oldest. Now, this mm -hmm. is prior to the flood, Corey. So, mm -hmm. who do you think it is? We were having a discussion about this. We were, and I think I have a pretty good guess as to who it is because I know Methuselah is the oldest. I'm, and he was 969. I think the second oldest was 950, and I think that was Seth. I think the third oldest is actually Adam. Is that right? That's my final answer, Adam. Well, I heard you discussing it, and you were agreeing with Corey on that, but actually, you're off by just a couple of years. You've missed somebody. The first oldest, you were absolutely correct, is Methuselah, and he did live to be 969 years old. Enoch was his father. The second oldest man recorded in the Bible is Jared, and he lived to be 962 years. Jared was the father of Enoch. The third oldest man in the Bible was Noah. He lived 950 years and uh, 
Noah. His name it, means comfort. That's right. So, so it was Noah. It was Noah. That yeah. I was just going to add that Methuselah was the father of Lamech, and Lamech was the father of Noah. So it's just in those generations. Right and there. of course, the conditions, Corey, were different uh, back then. We have long, there's a lot of theories surrounding the long names, but the Kings List in archaeology actually talks about uh, kings and actually lists them almost too long. Uh, but there's other things going on. I'm sure we'll get to that down the line. In the meantime, let's continue Bible discovery as we continue. In Genesis chapter 9, verse 2, God gave the second first family, all of humanity, the same commandment as he did the first. He said, be fruitful and multiply and fill the whole earth. But not long after Noah and his family began to multiply generations, dictators like Nimrod began to emerge and offer up new ideas and commandments for mankind. To be gods themselves and to make a name for themselves was the clarion cry of the newly corrupted world. Whenever men and women curse God's will and push their own words, confusion and chaos set in. With that in mind, we pray, Lord, teach me the power of honoring your plans and will for me and for practicing your word in my life. Today I leave you with strengthen your mind question, and the question is this, where in the Bible does it say, he, that is God, leads me in the right paths for his namesake? Now that's an amazing statement. For the answer, go to BibleDiscoveryTV.com and click on strengthen your mind. If you love Jesus and give your life to him, your name is on, his name is on you. Now the Bible says our minds can become poisoned when we begin to exalt our reasoning above God's Word. You want to become really smart, come to Jesus Christ. Open up your spirit. You see, we're much more than the material world and we're much more than the reason. We have a spirit. We have a spirit, a soul, and a body. And when that spirit comes alive to the power of Jesus Christ, we get really smart to the things of the spiritual world. The authority of all spiritual is Jesus Christ. Pray to Him today and say, Jesus, I need you now. I need to come alive. And I heard it on good authority that you rose from the dead. Come into my life and help me. Pray to Jesus today. Thank you for joining us today on Bible Discovery Quick Study. Remember, if you would like to go deeper, check out our Bible Discovery Seminary at BibleDiscoveryTV.com.